there, there, there must be some underlying urgency uh, motivating that. They must think that the, the ends justify the means in some well, sense. Of and, course. It's politics. But what's amazing is that they are, in the, certainly on the topic of Islamism, functioning as de facto apologists for theocracy. Sure. Uh, so this is it's the fact that they don't see this, the fact that this or that don't care about this, the fact that identity politics and their concern for you know, generic brown-skinned people or generic mm. immigrants trumps any concern they, they should otherwise have about real fascism and real theocracy and real human rights abuses, that still strikes me as somewhat mysterious. I, I feel like I'm in the presence of people mm. who have made some kind of reverse Faustian bargain, where it's, it's like they've sold their souls to the devil and they got stupid in return. <laughs> I mean, so yeah. like, like, I mean just, just before the atrocities in Paris, the previous news story was the, the students at Yale, where we just saw these, these mm. students, you know, and their shrieking narcissism. I mean, these, mm. these, these are among the most privileged kids in human history, and they became yeah. moral and psychological invalids in response to a polite email about Halloween costumes. Yeah. So something is, well, is very strange on the left right now. Well, I, what the hell is going could on? I, could I give one explanation of what it is? Uh, another... <laughs> Another conservative who I'm sure will would 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 make you tingle with with slight fear, as mm -hmm. it were, if I mentioned his name. But an American conservative who used to be on the left and moved very much to the right, David Horowitz. Mm. Um, uh, uh, he said some years ago something very interesting uh, about 1968. Now, I mean, you know, we, we might have all sorts of issues about this, but the he said something to me I think is far more true today which is that the surprising thing is not that young people would rebel. Young people always rebel. This is uh, uh, something that young people do. The surprising thing is, why did the adults give in? Now, I think this is far more uh, relevant to, 19, to, to today rather than 1968. The amazing question which hovers over Yale University is, why do the adults sit and take it and the kids can run rampage? Why, what, what's happened to, and this is the really large problem, which, uh, uh, which, which Islamists and other terrible people are simply taking advantage of. Uh, um, somebody needs to say to the shrieking girl who's effing and blinding at her professor, you know what? You're not at a home. This is not a home for you. It's a university. It's a very different thing. And what's more, if you cannot cope with Halloween costumes, then you've got no place at a university because you're going to have no chance of dealing with quantum physics or Shakespeare or Heidegger if Halloween spooks you out this much. <laughs> you're a useless person and you're going to go into a useless career because if you're a lawyer and you have gone to Yale but you're too sensitive to hear about rape cases, you're not going to be able to represent anyone in a court of law. So you're no use for the law. You're no use for literature because you might read a novel which will trigger you. You're no use for the sciences. You're no use for anything. And that's what the adults should be saying. They should be telling the kids to grow up. And the adults have lost their confidence. And that is the most striking thing to me. And, mm. and, and let me just say one other thing about this. This whole thing of the of, of the, the 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 weirdo sexual obsession uh, transgender trans polygender identify cis i've got a <laughs> penis but i can still win glamour woman of the year award mm. and who are you if not only not only do you have to respect me as a woman if you say i'm not an entire woman despite the fact i've got a penis still you're a bigger and and then and then you got to find them you got to find caitlin jenner attractive if you don't find her attractive you don't want to sleep with caitlin jenner you're an even bigger bigot this is what and actually to cite the other person you just said that would trigger you sam harris yeah. mark stein said this the other day this is the conversation we're having when the mullers will nuke us Everyone right. will be discussing whether somebody is transgender despite the <laughs> fact they've not had any operation. There's a woman in Britain called Jack Monroe, a fatuous far left wing so-called anti-poverty <laughs> campaigner, totally talentless individual. This blogger uh, uh, has recently come out as transgender. 
She says, by the way, she's not going to do anything about it. We just have to call her transgender and <laughs> regard her as transgender, but she's not going to get a penis put on her and she's not going to have her breasts uh, reduced or taken off or anything. And she's not going to. We've just got to start calling her um, a non sexual pronoun. Now it's <laughs> theirs, but Jack Monroe, the pink newspaper. I'm gay. I read some of this crap. Because uh, you're the gay. The pink newspaper <laughs> ran a story about Jack Monroe becoming transgender because she said, she is. I think she just wants a bit of publicity. Uh, they run a piece about her and they've got to say there. Jack Munro wrote a piece on their blog saying that they, when they was younger, I mean, it's an assault <laughs> on the language apart from anything else. Anyone who cares about our delicate and beautiful language should turn away now. But we'll all be discussing whether somebody who hasn't got a penis can be a man and whether somebody who has got a penis can be glamour woman of the year when the Islamists come in with Kalashnikovs. It's pathetic. <laughs> it's a breakdown in our society and you have to rectify it. Oh, that is hilarious. Well, um, for those who uh, may just be introduced to you again for the first time in this podcast, there you have a taste of the um, kind of ire that Douglas is able to summon in the midst of a debate. And that's a gear, unfortunately, which I don't have and um, wish I did. I think perhaps that part of my brain was damaged by too much meditation. But uh, <laughs> it right. is bad for you. Yeah. It is bad for you. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's certainly bad for this, and uh, you, you have this gear, and uh, Hitch obviously had it, and it is um, incredibly useful, so keep that well-oiled. 